This video is sponsored by June's Journey. Hello beautiful people and welcome to another video. In this one I'll be working on this vintage rocking chair that went through a lot. I don't even know how many holes there are in this chair but someone kept making them and kept moving the stretchers every time they broke. <laughs> this chair has been repaired so many times and as you can see someone used screws to reinforce the joinery and covered the holes with wax. And I don't even know what this is. So I definitely have my work cut out for me and there's gonna be a lot of repairs. Obviously this chair has been worked on many times and this is not the original upholstery and there was no padding on the back whatsoever, it was very uncomfortable and hard. And because there were so many repairs, I decided to take it completely apart and basically start from scratch. I'll try to show you this as best as I can, but this has been repaired multiple times. There was proper joinery and someone replaced it with two dowels and then they put screws through the dowels on top of that is the same story on the other side and everything is just full of glue and wax it's a mess there's a lot of holes everywhere looks like these stretchers need to be re-glued because this is not looking great the other one is better but it's not great either so i think i just need to take it apart i don't know what glue this is but i'll try to Soften it a bit. As you can see, I just used my heat gun to soften the glue and it was pretty straightforward to take it apart. I've just removed the fabric from the back because all the springs are really rusty and I need to take them off and remove the rust. So these are really rusty. I'm gonna put them in a container and use some rust remover mixed with water to get rid of the rust. If you're new to my channel, <laughs> I just need to tell you that I have never done proper upholstery, so this is my first project like this. So don't come after me in the comments because I've got no idea what I'm doing. But I guess after watching four or five videos on YouTube on how to re-upholster your chair, I'm pretty much a professional. So I will comment and tell you more or less what I'm doing, but by no means this is a tutorial, because like I said, <laughs> this is my first time and I've got no idea what I'm doing. As you can imagine, there were hundreds and hundreds of old staples, so I tried to get as many of them out as I could, but obviously not all of them. So I just hammered whatever was left into the frame and I used my sander to smooth everything out, just so I wouldn't cut myself. 
I sanded the entire frame, as you can see there was some damage in the structures, some of it was quite serious actually, and you will see in a minute how I fixed it. After soaking the springs in the rust removing solution, I dried them and I spray painted them even though obviously you won't be able to see them. This is just an example of some of the repairs that someone made before me and some of it was wood filler and some of it was some sort of epoxy, I think. The more stain and the original varnish I removed, the more problems I uncovered. There were some cracks and broken bits that someone fixed previously, like this one. And yeah, it just wasn't looking great. Two thousand years later. There were lots of dowels and I think someone who tried to repair it again and again because this has been repaired multiple times, not just once. So there were dowels in many different places and they just kept moving the stretchers wherever there was no hole. So look at all this. There's some wood filler or epoxy. It has been broken in multiple places. This has been broken and re-glued. The other side, this has been broken and re-glued. There was a repair, quite serious. So this is a mess. I'm gonna cut dowels and try to match the grain and plug all the holes, redo all the dowels and put it together. It's gonna be quite a lot of work. Not what I anticipated, but Looks like someone really liked it and they tried to repair it so many times, so it must be a really nice chair, so I'll do my best to repair it. As I mentioned, I realized that the original joints were loose, so I used my heat gun to take the frame apart and I re-glued them. I'm using this glue because as with the one that someone used originally, you can just heat it up and take everything apart so in case someone needs to repair this again, <laughs> they probably will. It will be pretty straightforward. I think part of the reason I like working on old furniture is because you never know what you're getting yourself into and it's always trying to figure out how someone put it together and what's the best way to repair it. And sometimes I even find items that people leave inside the pieces that I work on. It's always a bit of a mystery and that brings me to today's sponsor. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game with a great detective story which takes place in the 1920s. In this game, you'll help June solve the murder of her sister, finding out many secrets about her family along the way. There are plenty of colorful scenes for finding hidden objects and many fun characters. You'll be searching for clues, earning coins and flowers in order to buy items so you can develop and decorate your island. If you're into murder mystery stories, vintage stuff, thrifting, antiques, home decor and hidden objects, you're gonna love this game. You can download it for free now using the QR code on the screen or you can click on the link in the description of this video. This is a fun relaxing way to spend time and you can play June's Journey on your phone, tablet or desktop computer. After a whole day of finding out about the furniture that I work on and looking for clues on how someone put it together, June's Journey is a fun way to unwind. Thank you again to June's Journey for sponsoring this video. 
I looked through my stash of wood pieces to try and find something that would match the color and the grain on the frame of this chair. I found two pieces that I was quite happy with and I gave them light sanding just to make sure I knew what they really looked like. As you can see the sides of the frame were best matched by this piece of laurel that I had but the stretchers they looked more like teak. And because the holes that I was about to repair were different sizes I picked up some dowel cutters and tried to find the best matching grain. To make some of those repairs the dowels would have had to stretch from one edge of the piece of wood to the other and it just wasn't feasible so I just made them as big as it was reasonable and used a little bit of sawdust and wood glue or wood filler to patch up those little holes that were left. I cut a bunch of them different sizes and different colors just so I would have options to best match the grain. And because I don't want you to fall asleep, I'm only gonna show you a few of the repairs just to give you an idea what it looked like when it was done. And obviously not all of them look perfect like this one, but I was pretty happy with the result. This is a good example of what I was talking about. Someone used epoxy to fix this big hole. It was very irregular and really large so I used two dowels, a little bit of wood glue and sawdust to make it look as good as I could. Like I said, there were many repairs and when I was finally done with all of them, I drilled out all of the old dowels to make space for new ones so I could actually put it back together. But before I could do that, I had to address this thing. <laughs> Someone repaired it so many times that I just had to cut this whole thing out because there was no way it was gonna be strong enough if I put new dowels in it. So I cut that bit out, made sure that the surfaces were flat and I cut a piece of wool to fit the space and I glued it and clamped it in place. A few moments later I used my multi-tool to cut off most of the wood and used various tools to shape it until I was happy with it.
those dowels were partially broken and it was just a mess so I got rid of them and put new ones in. I used epoxy to fill all those cracks in one of the stretchers and when it was hard I sanded it smooth. I don't think I actually showed it in the video but after staining I used some touch-up markers and blended all those cracks with the rest of the wood. The webs looked pretty tired so I replaced them. And just to show you that sometimes you don't need to buy extra tools, this is what I did to stretch them. I also added a third web just to make it more supportive. I really wanted to avoid putting staples through my fingernails, so this is how I stretch the springs. And I'm glad to report all my fingers are okay. And when I was done with that, I stapled down some hessian fabric to separate the springs from the foam that I was about to put on. And as I mentioned before, I drilled out the holes and removed the old dowels to make space for the new ones. I hope you guys are enjoying this video, as always I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone for liking and commenting and especially the channel members. And as always all the links are in the description so if you'd like to visit my Amazon wishlist link or if you'd like to hit the super thanks button that would be awesome, thank you. So because there were so many pieces to glue together and it was a bit of a pain so I didn't record it, I just wanted to focus on trying to get it right. So. You'll see what it looked like when I was finished. After sanding all of the pieces I cleaned them with mineral spirit and got them ready for staining. And the reason I decided to stain is because the sides and the stretchers were different color and also there were so many repairs and bits of epoxy and those plaques that I cut so I wanted to make sure it was all a uniform color. When the stain was dry, I applied Odie's oil and this one is Odie's dark. I like this one because it's super easy to apply and it actually makes the wood darker as it ages. And this is the stretcher with lots of cracks when I was actually done with it. I was pretty happy with how it looked. One thing I forgot to mention is the reason I'm not actually putting everything together and then doing the upholstery is because I didn't want to wait so I could just stain and apply the top coat on the wooden bits and do some of the upholstery at the same time so that basically saved me time. 
I reused the foam that was on the chair originally and I applied some Dacron on top of it. I don't believe I need to explain what I'm doing here, so I'll just let you watch me. And now the part that I was not looking forward to because I'll need to do some sewing, which I had not done until this point. I'm basically measuring to see how I need to cut the fabric and where I need to sew it. And when you're working with velvet, you need to make sure that the pile is oriented the right direction, otherwise it might just not look right. And I've got no idea if this is the best way to do it, but again, I've watched four videos on YouTube, so I guess I'm a professional now. <laughs> I'm basically just cutting out those corners so I can sew them together. Also, because the little sewing machine that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace, you guys just laughed at me, so I bought a better one. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm freaking out a little bit because this is the first time I'll be sewing anything for like a proper use. <laughs> All of you who know how to use a sewing machine, just don't count for me because I've got no idea what I'm doing. I've watched like four YouTube videos. <laughs> and because velvet is quite slippery, I just use some pins to make it easier for me. And I went very slow because I didn't want to mess it up. And what do you know? It actually worked. I definitely felt a bit more confident with the other side. And surprise, surprise, it actually worked. <laughs> one of the corners was a bit more pointy than the other one, but I was pretty happy with it. I would say for my first time, it wasn't bad. YouTube told me that if I want to be fancy AF, I need to make some piping, so I did. Like I said, I'm not gonna show you how I put it all together because it was a bit of a pain, but when it was put together, I used the holes that were on the outside of the frame to put some screws in and reinforce the whole structure, and I covered them with furniture wax. And I also used a little bit of lacquer toner to even out the color because of all of the repairs and all that. If you remember, the back was very uncomfortable and not padded, so I used two layers of foam and I covered it all with Dacron. Cut a piece of fabric for the top and I staple it down. I also stapled the piping on the back and I made some sort of belt thingy. I'll show you where I put it. So I basically made decorative stitch using yellow contrasting color just because I felt like the chair needed a little extra something. And this is where I put it to cover this transition that wasn't particularly pretty. And I believe this is called flexible tacking strip and I stapled this on the back so I could actually attach the piece of fabric and cover this whole thing. And I was pretty much done. 
Definitely not perfect, but I think for my first time, I'm pretty happy with the result. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Download June's journey for free using the link in the description of this video. See you soon.